Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really quick and easy pillow using a mini strip set. I've got 10 strips here, five different colors, two each, and we need a 5 8 inch, 5 8 yard backing, and we can make this pillow top or we can make that pillow top. So let's unroll this and get started. When you take your strips out of the roll, you sometimes have to iron them so that they're flat, and you might want to iron that fold right there that came from when it was on the bolt. So once you've got them nice and flat, because they can get wrinkled while they're rolled up, we're gonna take these over to the cutting board, and this is the order I'm going to have them in, this order right here, but the black one we want less wide. So let's take that over here, We want the black one one and a half inches. The rest of these are two and a halfs. We want the black one one and a half. So anytime I am going to cut down a strip from a jelly roll, you can see if it lines up really straight on your board, you can simply cut one inch off of this side. If you're not sure it's really, really straight, then cut a little bit off of each side to make sure that it's accurate. I've got two sets five strips in each one, and I'm gonna sew them in order like this. They're gonna be long strip sets. We're gonna sew them all side by side. So we'll start with this guy. And we'll put this one right next to it. We're gonna use a quarter inch seam, and I'm gonna use a fairly small stitch length. We want to open this up and we're going to finger press the seam allowance to one side. And it really helps if you finger press this right now, because it's hard to iron these open unless they're finger pressed first. So I'm just opening it with the palm of my hands and drawing my, I'm using my fingernail. You can use your fingertip just a little bit to get it flat. The next strip is going to go on the right side and I'm just going to sew it all the way down, then take the next strip and the next strip. We're going to use the same procedure on all of these. So this is the last strip of the second set, and I need to show you how to iron these because it's kind of tricky. They are finger pressed, and all the seam allowances right now are heading in this, basically they're all heading in the same direction. So they're all facing down, but it's possible to lay this on the board and just start ironing it and not have it be very straight. But if you put a straight edge, like I use the big four foot stick here, I can line up against this and I will know that I'm not distorting my strips. So I'm gonna press it out and just pull it a little bit by hand before I start ironing so that I know it's nice and straight and I haven't ironed in any wiggles. So get it pressed, start pressing, and then double check both sides with the yardstick. So you can see on the top here, even with the naked eye, the top of this is slanting down a little. And that's just because I haven't pulled this quite open enough. So we'll straighten that out and then we'll iron it. So it may seem like extra steps here, but getting this nice and straight will make your pillow look a lot better. So we'll iron these very flat. Both sets are ironed exactly the same way. There's the first, now we'll do the second. I'm going to cut some triangles out of the strip unit. This is my strip tube ruler. It's not quite big enough for what I want to do here, but it has the right angle. So I'm going to put the edge of the ruler on the edge of the fabric. I'm going to hold it down, and then I'm going to line up my other straight edge and then move that away, and this is how I'm going to make my cut. So now we want to cut the other edge of the triangle. So I'm gonna line these two rulers up. See, they're right up next to each other, and I'm going to put this edge on the edge of the fabric, and I'm going to move this over. 
from here, I'm gonna slide it right over so that the edge of this ruler is right on the point there, and then I'm gonna make sure everything is lined up. Once I've got it lined up, I am going to move this little guy away and grab another straight edge, because I can only cut right-handed. I'm gonna slide this up next to that, hold it tight, move that away, and cut. Now I've got a beautiful triangle. Now we want to cut another triangle this way. So I'm going to, again going to use this ruler. I'm going to hold these right up next to themselves and slide them as a unit till this edge is lined up and straight. And this is right on the point. Okay, so hold this one, move that one. Set that there, hold it. Move that. I know it's a lot of steps, but it doesn't really take very long. Now we've got a triangle cut the other way. So these are going to fit just like that. All the seams are going to line up. And as a bonus, the seam allowances are already going in opposite directions. So it's going to make it really easy to sew these up and have those seams perfectly matched. Here's the four triangles. So all we're gonna do is sew that seam and then this, sew this seam, and then we'll do that one last seam. So I'm gonna just flip that over and put a little pin in it in case it falls off the machine. And same with this guy, so we know which edge to sew on. And we'll go right down here, and you'll see, because of the way we ironed it, the seam allowances on the top are going up and the seam allowances on the bottom are going down. So I'm not even gonna have to pin this. I can feel that those are matched up right there. It's real easy to tell. You wanna be a little careful you don't stretch this because this is bias right here. And you can iron it out if it does stretch a little. Now let's make this seam allowance go that way. And I'm not gonna finger press it all the way along there because it'll stretch. I'm just going to, right at the tip here, I'm just going to make sure that one stays that way. And then this one, when we open it, we want this seam allowance going the other way. So again, don't stretch it all the way along. Just in that last quarter inch, make it lay the way you want it to go. We'll put these right sides together and we'll stitch down here. Same thing is gonna happen. The seam allowances are all going opposite directions, so it's really easy to match them up. Now we're gonna take it over to the ironing board and we're gonna iron it flat first before we open it up. So I like to lay it on here flat and try to iron with the grain of the fabric. We don't want to stretch it this way or stretch it this way. But sometimes when you're stitching, it pulls it a little. And so we just wanna relax our sewing machine threads and we're going to iron this over a little bit that way, flip it the other side, iron this one flat just a little bit. Gotta go the other way. Now we're gonna open it up. And now, again, we wanna stretch it this way and this way and not too much along those seams because you can make it distorted. So I'm gonna feel from the back which way these seam allowances are going and press it nice and flat. I've got the pillow top on top of a piece of batting and then I put a lining behind it and that just gives it some nice body so that when you put your pillow form inside this cover it won't feel loose and baggy. If you want to quilt the pillow now is a good time to do that. You could just go in the ditch around the square. You could put it on your long arm machine and do a pattern. Lots of lots of options there. Here is the back. This is 5 eighths of a yard and I just simply split it along the fold and I've got these selvage edges here. So I'm gonna flip this guy upside down and I'm going to turn back about four inches 
and I'm going to put this a little bit beyond the middle of the pillow. Lay it nice and flat. Now I'm going to take the other selvage edge and I'm going to pull it down a couple inches beyond where the other selvage was. And now I'm going to pin through all the layers and I'm just going to see where my stitching is and I'm just going to pin through all the layers from this side, just a couple of pins, then we'll flip it over and finish pinning. We're going to stitch this from this side. So I've got, I just have four pins in. You can put a lot more pins in if you want, but we're going to stitch all the way around just inside this stitch line. Now we're gonna trim off all of the excess layers about a half inch from your stitching line. And I'm not even going to clip off the corners. I'm gonna leave the excess in the corners because that will help make them look stuffed. Flip it over and we're just gonna turn it right side out right here. And we'll reach inside and poke those corners out again. They won't be really, really, really pointed, but I want extra stuffing right in the corners so they feel, feel filled out. Now we'll get our pillow form and put it inside here. I'm really happy with how the pillow turned out. It's just geometric and very satisfying. It has an almost Amish feel to it. I have the opening in the back here. Now, of course, if you like to put zippers in, you can put a zipper right on the edge and um, that way that back won't show at all and it'll be completely reversible. This is about an 18 inch pillow. It went together really, really fast. And you could imagine this in other colors. I'm using grunge here, but you could use a variety of batiks. It is nice to have a little bit of an accent or a pop color right here. I think that makes the pattern show up really well. So a really fun project. So get your strips, try this pillow out. Thanks for watching.